What's up guys, Xbell here, and today I'm gonna be sharing with you six tips to help you dominate in Warzone solos. I've learned a little bit over the past week of playing Warzone solos, and I think you're really gonna appreciate the tips that I have for you because I think they're really, really gonna change the game that you're playing. Regardless, guys, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please do me a favor and drop the video a like. It'd be greatly appreciated, as well as follow me down below on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash imxpel, and subscribe on my YouTube channel, now, if you're new around here and you want to, you know, keep up to date, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Regardless, let's hop into things and learn a little bit more about how to dominate in Call of Duty Warzone solos. Over the past week, I've learned a lot about how to play and win within Call of Duty Warzone. I've ended up with quite a few wins within the trios mode with some of my friends, but more importantly, I've learned a little bit more about how to win in solos. Whenever it first came out, I could not figure out for the life of me how to play that specific mode. Now, if you remember, I used to play Blackout and I was pretty good at solos, duos, quads, all of it. But in this game, it's very, 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 very different. If you do the exact same thing that you did within other games and you bring it into this game, it will not work the exact same way. There's a lot of forces within this game that work against you rather than with you. But if you learn to use the tools properly within Call of Duty Warzone, then you can actually come out with some pretty sick wins. But it really comes down to about five, six, maybe seven even tips, uh, but I'm gonna break it down into six that I think are the most useful for you guys and uh, will definitely get you those wins. So off the rip, I wanna be very clear. I've been having some massive issues with teammates really just constantly going for drop kits. I wanna be very clear. It is not worth it. If you can learn to use the other weapons that you can pick up off the ground, such as the SCAR, the M13, the MP7, you really don't need to be going for them. You need to wait for a drop kit to land near you and go for that. Normally, these drop kits land between two teams and, or in this case, two solos, and you're able to push for them, and the other player usually doesn't actually go for them. But if they do end up going for them, you still kind of have an opportunity to get it. Now, what I like to do is push up a little bit slower on those drop kits, see if I can catch them off guard. If they are there, you know, scout it out a little bit just to see if someone's going to be there. If no one's there, I hit the drop kit as fast as possible and get out. You want to get your class and leave. Plain and simple. So, I highly recommend no matter what, you're not worrying about drop kits as much as you are thinking that you're needing them, you're really not. It's not a big deal. As long as you pick up guns like the MP7 and the M13, you really should be fine. Even the SCAR is good at times as long as you know how to aim. By the way, I do have another video coming out on some best classes that you guys should be using as they're really, really useful. And in this case, I only have one class, but you should definitely check out the video. Uh, whenever it comes out, I'll have it linked down below. If it's out already, you can go check it out. Regardless, drop kits needed to be waited on. Number two, we have UAVs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know, UAVs are fantastic for Warzone and very, very useful in solos. A little trick that I have is I like to go to a buy station, grab a UAV, throw it on, and then buy another one. Obviously, in this case, you're gonna need $8,000 to do that. But if you're playing the game right, you're hitting the early game with plunder and stuff like that, you're making sure that you are hitting these recons and the searches and stuff like that, it'll be very, very easy for you to get this money. Honestly, if you loot for about three minutes, which is normally longer than I would recommend on any other game, but in this game, it's not that big of a deal as there's already 150 players in the game. You're not worried about going for kills off the rip. I think that you should go for that money and then get these UAVs and get yourself finding other people to take their money and their loot. It makes it a lot easier on you in the early game, but even easier on you in the late game. Whenever you grab these UAVs, you not only find people that are near you whenever you pop that first one, but you also have the second one for later. Whenever you're out of that area, you don't have a buy station and you need a UAV. If you feel like people are near you, you want to throw them on. Another neat little trick having to do with UAVs, however, is whenever you pop your UAV, normally I like to decide who I'm going to go for. I like to get a kill out of every UAV that I have. It's not like I pop the UAV and run away because I don't want to engage in any gunfights. As long as you're playing it right, you can take out anybody that you want. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But what I like to do 
is choose the player I want to go for and mark the map where that player is going to be. That way I don't lose track of them. Just to be clear, what that means is I basically open up the map, I mark it, and whenever the UAV goes away, I already know which direction they were going and where they were at. So I can push that place, decide where they're going to be or where I think they're going to be, and hopefully catch them off guard. So UAVs altogether are ridiculously helpful, and I highly recommend that's what you're spending your money on, obviously, as well as self-revive kits. But UAVs are more important, in my opinion. So UAVs, UAVs, UAVs. Now, tip number three, we have the infamous, the thing that everyone loves and all the YouTubers are telling you about, but I'm gonna explain it a little bit further, heartbeat sensors. Ladies and gentlemen, heartbeat sensors are ridiculously overpowered. If you are not running a heartbeat sensor, if you are not picking up heartbeat sensors in solos, I hate to tell you, you're an idiot. You honestly are. I'm so sorry. Someone in the comment section is going to lose their mind, I'm sure, because that's what always happens when I call people stupid. They're like, no, you don't need a heartbeat sensor. I don't know why I turned into Mickey Mouse. Um, regardless, heartbeat sensors are a huge deal in this game. You can see up to 50 meters, maybe even like 51, 52 on your heartbeat sensor. It gives you uh, even more than a, it's 180 degree angle that you can see people. So if they're directly on your left or, le or directly on your right, you can still see them on the heartbeat sensor, which is ridiculous. So it's very, very useful. All you have to do is turn around, check it once, check it twice. You're done for the area that you're at. It only takes like five seconds to figure out if anybody's there all together like front and back it's like two seconds either side so it's definitely worth it and i'm always always checking my heartbeat sensor if i find one on the ground at the beginning of the game it's basically like gonna be a high kill game guaranteed not anybody in the early game can get a drop kit fast enough to get their ghost and people aren't even using ghost people are switching out ghost for their overkill classes especially at the beginning of the game so if you are using that heartbeat sensor early on it makes it so 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 much easier to get those kills tip number four has to be one of my favorite things to say and something that i'm a strong believer in and i'm basically losing friends over Please, ladies and gentlemen, be as quiet as you possibly can. When you are playing within Call of Duty Warzone, people expect you to be running around and being loud and stuff like that. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. What you want to be doing is crouching whenever you're getting near people. Whenever you feel like someone may be around, get quiet. Crouch. Make sure whatever classes you have like picked out from your drop kit if you do end up getting a drop kit they have a suppressor on the weapon i highly recommend the monolithic suppressor which by the way you can catch in my uh my class setup video just saying just, just throwing it out there um monolithic suppressors are fantastic they increase your damage range and also silence your weapon you need to be using it and please guys if you don't have to do not get in vehicles the reason that i say this is if there's anybody within like a 500 meter radius they can see the vehicles on the map it will show up as a red vehicle moving around that means anybody that is going for kills that game will rush directly to you these people will instantly go right at you and try and kill you don't put yourself in a situation where people are all trying to get to you instead of get to other people or maybe even hide a little bit you don't want to make yourself known you want to be quiet as silent as you possibly can tip number five ladies and gentlemen is one that is very very important and if you don't follow this you're probably going to die as i did 57 times in a row in solos without understanding how to even play the game guys don't rush inside of buildings especially when you know there's enemies in them you want to make sure you are taking everything very slow. If you pull out your heartbeat sensor, or you have a UAV and you see someone's in a building, do not push into that building, especially if there's an upstairs or multiple rooms or anything like that. If you don't have an opportunity to get them before they get you, it's so, so, so hard to get those kills, guys. You want to make sure that you're using your knowledge of your surroundings and things like that to try and get them out of the building or hop in another building directly across from them and shoot them out of it. In no way do you ever want to push into a building where your enemy has an advantage over you because they know the layout a little bit better. They can hear you coming and get killed because you weren't playing it correctly. 
you don't want to rush inside buildings i can't tell you the amount of times that i've literally walked inside a building and just got mowed down because i didn't realize that there was someone in there or because i realized somebody was in there and i was like well maybe i can get them you won't you really won't it never works out that way and if it does it's like a one-off thing you really don't want to go inside of buildings you want to basically try and lead people out of buildings to the best of your ability. Maybe even shoot outside the building to get their attention. I know that goes against my last rule, but try and get them out of the building rather than you going into the building. Now, last but not least, one of my favorite rules and something that you can use from every other battle royale you've ever played. Ladies and gentlemen, my all time favorite thing is high ground if you don't know high ground is one of the biggest things for any battle royale game that you play or just any game in general that you play high ground gives you an advantage over everyone if you can shoot down on someone and also by the way star wars <clears throat> uh if you can shoot down on someone <laughs> then it gives you a little bit more of an advantage because you're looking down at their full body they're looking up at basically your head especially if you're using a head glitch on high ground if you're looking down at an angle take take for example when you're on a roof if you can head glitch on the roof where they can only see your head but you can see their whole body down below you win plain and simple unless you're really bad at aiming you win that gunfight so make sure that you're using high ground properly if you have the opportunity to get above someone, I highly recommend it, especially if there's a ladder between you and them and they have to go up the ladder, you win that gunfight no matter what. Unless they run away, you're getting that kill. Regardless, that is going to do it for my six tips to help you dominate in Warzone solos. If you guys did enjoy, please remember to drop the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn on notifications. You can find my Twitch down below, as well as all of my other social media, including my Discord, where, uh, where you can really get a hold of me and say hey and stuff like that. Regardless, thanks a ton, guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.